Welcome to another Inside Story. This is where we go behind the scenes and show you things that you probably won't see on my television program, but things that are really important. And this month, you are really gonna be blessed. We have one of our favorite Bible teachers in Karis Bible College, Barry Bennett with us. And Barry is a blessing on so many levels. If you don't know him, I encourage you to please get hold of his teaching and he's got books. We're gonna be talking about that. He's got a daily devotional and he's got just a lot of ways to minister to you. But Barry has been through a healing journey here in the last few years where uh, I think he was just hours away from death and I mean went through quite an ordeal and man he's got a new love for life, a new excitement about ministry and he's just a blessing and I think that what he has to share with you is really, really going to be a blessing. So welcome Amen. Barry. Andrew, here. thank you so much for having me. We are glad that you're with us. I am too. <laughs> Real quickly, just give a little bit of background because your testimony is so much more than just the healing, but you've been in Chile, you've been around the world. God's been doing some great things with right. you. Right, we were missionaries in Chile for 12 years, 12 and a half years, and then we were in Dallas for seven years or six, I forget. I had a Spanish Bible college for five of those years, and then we came up here. We've been here 15 and a half years with this ministry. And one of the things that really drew me to Barry, I mean, I've always liked him, but I found out that he had all of this background and ministry experience, and he was just answering questions in our correspondence department, never promoted himself. And then we found out that he had all this ministry experience. We invited him to come minister. Uh, not, it was, wasn't me, it was one of the directors of the Bible school invited him to speak. And man, the students loved him, gave him a standing, standing ovation. And he never promoted himself. He let God promote him. And I tell you, when I see that kind of an attitude, I'm drawn towards people like that. That's a godly attitude. So he's been a great blessing in uh, our ministry to our students and everything. And you just been, you've been a blessing on a lot I, of levels. I'm blessed to be here. And I thank you for the opportunities because uh, sharing the word with a thousand students that we have now on a weekly basis, what a blessing this is. So you've got a number of books that you've written. What are they? I do. I have uh, four. Uh, Did God Do This to Me, which is a question and answer book. Hearing God, which is some of my testimony of how I learned to hear God. Then I wrote uh, He Healed Them All, my healing book, which I wrote before uh, I got sick. And you, you said that you read, <laughs> I read that it while, while I, you were while sick I and it really sick. ministered it to did. you. <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> That's and awesome. then uh, my last book was Shaping Your Future, about the power of the seed. And I'm writing another book now, so. Oh, good. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you have this daily devotion. Where, do, where is I that? I do. I have a Facebook page called Barry Bennett Public Figure. That's a Facebook terminology. And I have a devotion that comes up or a mini teaching every day of the year. It's been going on for years now. So uh, a lot and of, you, a lot you of followers. You said on you got 50,000 followers? I have at least 50,000. And then from there, it goes further. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. So. Well, God's really given you some revelation. but. Specifically, uh, people have seen you minister, they've heard some of these things, but not everybody knows everything you went through in the last few years. So tell us, tell us what happened. Well, I, uh, it was actually the men's advance of March of 2020. Uh, the last day of the men's advance, I started feeling really badly. And COVID was just picking up steam, so I thought, well, maybe, I don't know. So I went home and I didn't come back for months uh, yeah. because we shut down. But uh, I just felt badly uh, March, April into May. And on May, sometime early May, I started, I don't want to get too graphic here, but I was passing blood and uh, thought, well, I better go get checked out. This is, I don't feel well. I have a cough. I, I'm lethargic. And now this. And so I went in and had, got checked out by a doctor. My daughter works for a doctor, so they took me. And uh, they did a blood test and questions and answers and all this kind of thing. And so that was on a Monday. On Thursday, I came to school and preached at the campus days to an empty auditorium. You were in the front row. That was during COVID when during we had COVID. to go And digital. so we were live streaming campus days. And my son, Daniel, came up to me and said, Dad, you don't look good. You look yellow. And I was turning yellow. And I wasn't feeling great, but I, you know, I, I usually just press on through these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I preached. And then we, you and I had lunch together. And uh, you were Maybe talking. Maybe that's what did it to you. Well, I don't know. With me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you were talking about healing of all things. And neither one of us knew that I was just 
two days away from death at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a phone call the next day from the doctor's office. They said, stop what you're doing. Go to the emergency room right now. We'll be there. We'll wait for you. They'll have it set up. And this was a result of these blood of tests? Of the blood test. And they said, your pancreas has stopped. Your liver has stopped. Your numbers are off the charts. And you need to get in right now. And so we went in and they did x-rays. They did scans. They did blood tests, whatever. And I don't know, a couple hours later, the admitting doctor walks into the room and says, uh, he looked at all the results. He said, Barry, I don't know, you know, if you're a man that likes to make plans, but you need to make some. Uh, you're going to pass away. They gave you no hope. So that was the initial first, uh, first consensus was that. And did you feel that bad or was this just totally out of well, the Well, I didn't way? feel that bad, but <laughs> <laughs> didn't know I was dying. I didn't feel well, but uh, I was... I can't really tell you how shocked I was. It was absolutely out of the blue. Especially since you just written a book on healing. I just wrote a book on healing. I just preached the day before, and all of a sudden I'm dying. And it was just, I was, I have to say I was disoriented for about two or three weeks. Just, I couldn't comprehend it. But within probably 30 minutes of when he told me that I was, I need to get my affairs in order, uh, the peace of God came over me. And I just had this sensation. I won't say it was a word. Maybe I've described it that way before, but it was a knowing that I will not die from this. I'm going to live. Oh, wow. And, uh, Praise God. And I have to say, perhaps it was, it was a seed. It was there. It grew over time. But that was the piece I needed to, to go through with what I had to go through. So what was this diagnosis? Did they ever put a name to it? Eventually they did. But first of all, they just had to try to save my life. Uh, because I was being poisoned to death with bile. So they ran a tube through my side, and, had, and I had to drain mm. every two hours for the next 10 days, uh, get the bile out, and so around the clock. So uh, that was probably the worst 10 days of my life. <laughs> Were you in the hospital that whole time? Uh, part of that time and part of it at home. So I was in and out all the time in the hospital. But uh, eventually, uh, the following Wednesday, I, was, I went into the hospital on a Friday. The following Wednesday, they came back with the report that I had non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And for the doctors, that was like a praise report. And I'm thinking, that doesn't sound too good to me. You mean that was better than what that they were thinking? That was better thinking? than pancreatic cancer, which was what they thought. I had, it turns out I had a softball-sized tumor on my pancreas. I learned a lot of these facts months later. They didn't tell me all this at first. Uh, but I had a softball-sized tumor on my pancreas, and the liver had shut down, the pancreas had shut down. And so eventually they had to put a stent in and what have you. I was bleeding internally. The blood was from this tumor. It had hemorrhaged. It was trying to perforate my intestines. Mercy. I have non-Hodgkin lymphoma and bile filling my body. And so it was all pretty now, critical. Now, what is non what is it? It's that a mean? blood cancer. A blood cancer? Yeah, I have not studied it. I have refused to look that's up all good. this stuff. <laughs> that's, that's wisdom. But uh, they hadn't, of course, I had to sign off on things, but I didn't even read them. I just had peace from God. So I went ahead and signed off and felt peace to let them do their thing. And uh, what, what started out is, um, you know, we're going to try and save your life, which that, you know, that happened, praise mm -hmm. God. Then they said, we're going to have to do six chemos every three weeks, a chemo. And uh, I had to sign off on that, and I had peace to do it. And I thought, after three, they're going to do another scan, and they're going to see the tumor's gone. And so after three, we did a scan, and the tumor wasn't gone. And that was disappointing. That was really disappointing, because I had really been pressing in for Hope that. deferred makes the heart sick. Oh, That's boy. Probably not and good. so we're going to have to do three more. And so they did three more over a period of weeks. And finally, by September, they ran tests, and the tumor was gone. And, the, and it was a huge tumor, and the, the GI doctor, I think gastrointestinal, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, he talked to my wife after he did a, a camera tour of my inner man. <laughs> and uh, you, They got to know you better than well, you wanted man, them to know you, didn't you? I have no modesty anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he told my wife, he says, when he saw that tumor was gone, he says, I want to thank you for letting me be part of this miracle. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, what was the time frame from when you first that went was, in? That was, a, well, that was in May, and I got that report in September that I was clean. And wow. they, they thought I was clean from lymphoma and the whole thing. And so I started coming back to school slowly and started doing, I did the minister's conference mm -hmm. uh, with the ball cap on. 
And, I remember uh, that. Yeah, no eyebrows, <laughs> no hair. <laughs> but uh, did that, and then about the 1st of December, I went in for another follow-up scan, and the lymphoma was showing up again. That was crushing, crushing, I, I, because I was just starting to teach, and I was getting back in the rhythm. So and did that mean that you it had come back, or was it still there and just not it obvious? Perhaps or? hadn't been totally eradicated, I don't know, but it was showing up stronger than it had. Uh, so I'd go back for more chemo. So I had to do uh, two more chemos as a test run to see if I would be a candidate for bone marrow transplant. And I didn't get any better with those two chemos, so I was not a candidate for bone marrow transplant, which turned out to be a good thing. Uh, then they decided perhaps I'd be a candidate for this new thing called CAR T-cell transplant. And I had to go through all kinds of tests for that. I got to lie on a table and see my heart beating on a sonogram. They took spinal fluid. They did brain scans. I had to go to the dentist and have my teeth checked. They, had, they did everything to see if I would qualify. And I did, and so I had to have three more chemos before that. So I had a total of 11 chemo treatments, and then uh, the CAR T-cell treatment. And that's where they took all the blood out of my body, ran it through a machine, took out the T-cells, uh, sent them to California. How do you make it with all of the blood out of your well, body? Well, it, it's going around in a circuit. <laughs> okay, so it's not like they just... They didn't take it all out at once. They weren't like no. vampires. But, they no. <laughs> but uh, it was... Uh, an unusual experience. Betty Kay, my wife, was sitting there with me, and I had this giant thing in my neck and all this blood coming out and going through a machine. So, What were you thinking during all this, Barry? I, Andrew, this was so not me. Um, I absolutely was shocked for the whole year. I just couldn't believe this because I believe in healing. I yeah. teach healing. You've seen a lot of people heal. I proclaim healing. I don't know where this came from. Uh, we can speculate, but I, I just, I never got out of shock, really, from, from the whole thing. But I decided I had peace. The peace is what kept me going. One thing I learned, and I'll get back to the T-cells in a minute, but one thing I learned is that we live, can live simultaneously on three different levels. And most people live on two. But those of us that are born again, we have the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And I learned to live by the spirit of peace and faith that he gave me that first day. Even though my emotional level, my soulish level, was on a roller coaster, I, I had good days, I had bad days, I had real bad days sometimes. And then my physical was another level. And I find that most people struggle that are going through lengthy situations like this. They only live from their soul and their physical, yeah. and that there's no strength there. And I went through all those emotions and all those feelings, but I had a spiritual foundation that kept me on the on the path to healing. So that was, that was the victory for me. Well, it's like Paul said that our, our physical man perishes day yes. by day, but the inward man is renewed exactly. day by day. You can literally live in the spirit, Amen. not by bread alone. And if you only live by your flesh or your soul, good luck, because there, there's no power there. Yeah. So that was... That do you was, think if you hadn't have been trusting the Lord and believing God, do you think that these treatments would have brought you through? Or are you like this doctor doc said that it was a miracle? It was a miracle. The doctors, I don't think, believed it would make, I would make it. It was very grim. Now, as time went on and they began to see this guy's not dying, uh, they probably changed their tune a little bit. Uh, it, was, it was touch and go there for a while. So this T cell, you said you were going to get back the T to T cells. They sent to California where they were re-engineered. This is they took your cells to California in a in a frozen thing, and uh, <laughs> they re This is the who the, figures this stuff I out. I don't know, but God bless them. Amen. And uh, <laughs> and they send them back and they put them back into my body. That takes about 20, 30 minutes. And then for the next 10 days, I had to be completely isolated. My wife couldn't see me. Nobody could see me. I was in a Denver hospital. And, and if uh, I'm not mistaken, the reason for that is because they had basically just killed your immune system so immune that you system, could receive yes. these new cells. So, so they would have a chance to take off. no immunity to anything. No. So it was, that's another dangerous period. Uh, and so there I am. And... Uh, Part of it is psychological, mental issues are possible with that. So they come in and check you twice a day. I have to answer all these questions. Uh, they point to things on the wall. What is this? What is this? How many fingers am I holding up? Sign your name. Write this sentence. And as the days went by, I, my writing got worse and worse. I couldn't keep it on the line. You know, to me, that would be humiliating. It was. 
It really would. Because it wasn't me. Yeah. And at one point I lost track of night and day. I didn't even know what, what day it was or what night, it, if it was night. But all of that, they said that all this could happen. It might happen. It could be worse. You'd had a, I had a pretty easy go of it, actually. And uh, after 10 days, then we moved into a hotel with Medicaid. Had to that stay another a, two weeks. That was a big improvement, I'm sure. Yes. For me. <laughs> Let me just add, I know you got more to this story, but yeah. how did this affect Betty, Betty Kay? I mean, Betty Kay was, I've learned that it's worse usually on the mate than it is the person who's going through this. She was absolutely awesome because, again, this was during COVID. So not only am I quarantined because of cancer, but I'm quarantined because of COVID. COVID would be a danger to my life. Yeah. So when I'm at home, I'm, I'm there. I can't drive. I can't go anywhere. She has to do everything. She has to go shopping. She has to cook for me. She has to do everything. And when I had the bag, she had to empty the bag. So now that's love. It, it was. That's love. So, uh, no, she was absolutely awesome. And that's awesome. So did she waver during this, or how was she? Was she strong? No, she's, she, she had peace, too. At least I, that's how I perceived it. I never saw her waver. So we were strong together. Man, that's awesome. I tell you what, we sure missed you here. Yeah. You went how long without being in Bible college? Well, except for the brief time I thought I was back, I was gone for a year. I missed a year of school uh, and really missed it. And you all started doing the live Bible studies during that time, and then mm -hmm. I really missed it because I thought, oh, I would love to do this. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so get past the T-cell. How did you respond to this treatment? So did after those 10 days, I finally came out of that fog, and, and uh, they started doing tests again, and it looked like things were going well. And uh, it's been, I've had tests, I think, every first, at first three months and then six months. I just had one last month. And uh, the doctors are just amazed. He says, you look like you're cancer-free. He says, uh, we want to do a two-year check, so five months from now, I think, will be the two-year mark. And he says, at that point, we call you done. And uh, oh, man, that's awesome. I've already called myself healed in Jesus' that's name. Awesome. But, uh, I tell you, Andrew, after going through that, and a lot of people have mentioned that I seem different. I, I know I'm different. When I teach now, there's a different spirit in me, a different heart in me for people, a different compassion for those that are suffering. Uh, it's just different for me. Everything is different. And more than teach at this point right now in my life, I feel like I am wanting to impart to people the love of God, the goodness of God, uh, the grace of God. There's more of an impartation desire in me than teaching anymore. It's, it's just it's changed. I don't know. I think so, it would change your whole outlook on life. Like, you, do you ever just sit there and think about, God, it's nice to be alive? Every day. <laughs> Every day. Every Sometimes time. you don't appreciate things until you nearly lose. You know, it. I, I used to, I was getting tired of driving up here because I live 50 minutes away. Yeah. And I was starting to get tired of driving up here until this happened. And now I love it. <laughs> I listen to teachings coming up. I listen to teachings yeah. going down. I'm happy to have a car that I can drive. I mean, everything has value to me now. And uh, it's just, I'm in, I'm in love with life. And the opportunities that you're giving me at this school are just such a blessing. So what have you learned? I mean, you were mentioning compassion for people wanting to do more than just teach and impart. But I mean, did you learn anything personally that has made a difference in your walk with the Lord? Or? Well, I think since I had came through it, uh, I decided to do a study on the goodness of God, which is something I've studied before, obviously. I've heard you minister on it. And I, I just got into the goodness of God more than I'd ever had. And I guess ver verses that I used to read started coming alive to me, and I began to see them. And I began to, to know them in a, in a different way. And that has been my motivation since then. I try to weave that into almost everything I do now. So what kind of lessons would you use to share with other people that are uh, in the midst of something like this? I'm sure you learned a lot about I persevering did. and holding on. I did. On. And I, you know, two main things would be, first of all, the spiritual dynamic of, of getting in touch with God and letting Him give you that peace, that faith to, to go through it however he says to go through it. I've had other situations where I didn't go to the medical route. I, in fact, I got off of a pre-op table once and walked out of the hospital really? for, a, for a major kidney stone. And uh, I just got a burst of faith. Nope, I'm not doing this. So I know what that's like. But this time I didn't get that kind of burst of faith. I got mm -hmm. the peace to go through it. Uh, and so you, everyone needs to find out where their faith is and follow their faith. 
Uh, you can't follow my faith. I can't follow your faith. Right. You've got to be alive to what God is quickening to you. The second thing that, that uh, really sustained me was planning my future, seeing my future, seeing myself back on the platform teaching, seeing myself in school, seeing myself doing live Bible studies. I would project that. And I kept the future in front of me. I kept saying, I'm coming through this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And I planned for Christmas because we lost Christmas because of quarantine. We didn't get to do anything with our kids or grandkids. So I planned a big Christmas. I planned a vacation with Betty Kay. And I just I went online and bought stuff online that I couldn't use until I was healed. <laughs> That's and awesome. I just thought, I'm going to make it, so I'm going to plan for the future. And now, I hadn't heard you talk about that, but that goes along with things that the Lord has shown me about your imagination. Absolutely. But you have to see it on the inside before you see it on the outside. I read your book. I've read it three times, and I think I read it two times that year while I was in the hospital and, and at home. And it's a great book. Uh, I, I forget the exact title, The Power of Imagination. Power of Imagination. Yeah, it's, uh, but, you know, if a person in a fight like that actually goes to seeing what the doctors are saying and the prognosis, and if you see yourself dying, and if you, yeah. uh, I mean, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It does, and I refuse to do that. And I've never, uh, to this day, have not looked up everything that went on in my life, in my body. I, I just don't want to go there. So throughout this whole thing, you had a peace that you were going to live through it regardless. I had a spiritual peace. I didn't always have an emotional peace. I mean, uh -huh. I, you know, but a lot of that was drug-related, chemo-related. There was stuff going on in my body that I can't be held accountable for. But this peace of the Spirit was there. So did they give you drugs that altered your mental stuff? Uh, more emotional things, I think, not mental as much as just I would, well, that's what I, mean. I would cry at the drop of a hat. I mean, no. I, anything. You think that was drug-induced and stuff? Some of it, though it still exists some, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, get, I just get so thankful. So, and, and when I get thankful, I get emotional. When I talk about what my wife did for me, I get emotional. And I just can't stop crying. But Man, just, that's awesome, Barry. We are so glad to have you back, brother. And, me too. And, when you get up and minister, you do have a new zeal, a new zest. It's like uh, sometimes you nearly have to lose something to appreciate it fully. Well, I don't want anyone to go through that, but uh, I think we can all come into a freshness daily. And I say this, and you've probably heard me, I feel like I get born again every day. And, you know, as you said, the outward man perishes, but the inner man is renewed day by day. And I've taken that to heart that every day is a new day in the Spirit. Everything is fresh and new, and I'm, I'm living that. Well, you know, this is a good example that both of us uh, believe that God's not the one who did this to you. This isn't God who gives us these trials and stuff, but if you hold on to your faith and go through it, man, He works it together for good. Amen. And man, here you are, a brand new man, born Amen. again man. Amen. That's awesome. God can turn any negative thing around. Amen. Awesome. It's a blessing. So what's this new book you're talking about? I'm writing a book now on You Have the Advantage. And I'm going through all the advantages that Christians have that they tend to forget. If we have the Spirit of God, we have the advantage. We have the power of words, we have the advantage. We have eternal life, we have the advantage. And I just go through and I'm still writing it, but uh, it's a book of encouragement. So what you were saying about your imagination, this is how you keep from focusing on those negatives and looking at the advantages that you have and seeing yes, that. And yes, yes. You, you've got to do that. You know, I've been walking. I just, in November was my 50th anniversary of walking in the Lord. I've just turned 70 last August. And in those 50 years, I think I am more excited about the things of God right now than I've ever been. And I, have, I can look back and see, I wish I had known some things back in the day that I know now. Uh, I wish I had had the same spiritual insight that I have now, but I have it now, so I'm going to press on with, with the good things that God is showing me now. Well, that's awesome. Well, you're a blessing, brother. We sure appreciate you. Well, Andrew, thank you so much. You're a big part of this. And you know what? A blessing. Uh, he just happened to be on staff with us, and we happened to have a insurance policy. And I think <laughs> I heard you say it was multi-millions yeah, of dollars that was, this would have uh, cost. If, yeah, I feel bad about that, but well, thank God for it. No, I mean it was the insurance, and it, and so, but it was what a blessing. It it was. It and was if very, we hadn't had that, I, I don't got know. one bill one day for just the ten days of the car, car T cell thing. They send you these notifications that say this is not a bill but the in parentheses it, it will be soon you know that kind of thing and they 
put out the line items of this CAR T cell transplant, and it came to two million two hundred thousand dollars for ten days for that that one ten day process of the CAR T cell transplant. Mercy. And then it says, and this is what you owe. It said twenty dollars. <laughs> I said, Betty Kay, get the checkbook. <laughs> Pay quickly before they change their so, mind. But that was about half of what this all came to. And uh, praise God for, I never, I was ambivalent toward insurance. I'll never need that, that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, there it is. And what a blessing it was. Oh, that's yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise Amen. God. Your future's so bright, you got to squint to look Amen. at it, brother. Amen. I'm looking forward to everything God has. That's awesome. Yeah. So I bet you Betty Kay is enjoying having you back and your kids. Some of you don't know, but Daniel Bennett is his son, and he teaches in the Bible school. And I've got two grand nieces that are in the school, and we asked them who their favorite teacher was. And usually it's Barry Bennett, but both of them said Daniel Bennett. I they need, just I need love to talk Daniel. to them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, man, it's just awesome. That's, That's great. good. How you know, many... one, one thing I, I did, I said to Betty Kay when, I, when we were going through this, and she was cooking every single meal, every single day. And I said, when I'm through with this, I'll take you out to eat whenever you want. We eat out a lot now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I do but it she's joyfully. getting payback for all Yeah, that. absolutely. That's absolutely, awesome. Absolutely, yeah. All right, so tell them again. How do they get in touch with your um, daily devotion books? Where do they go to okay. get your materials? Uh, Barry Bennett. Uh, public figure on Facebook is the Daily Devotion. The books are available from AWM, obviously, and from Keras. They're also on Amazon. And uh, I have a website, but I haven't touched it in like four or five years, but it has a lot of older material on it. Mm -hmm. It's barrybennett.org. And uh, they can get in touch with me. There's an address to write me there. So. And you do travel around to our different Bible schools that are in the States and ministers. So if yes. somebody got on your mailing list, do you have a mailing list? I do not have a mailing list, no. Well, how would they know if you were coming to one? Like, I know you're going to well, Phoenix. Well, the schools promote me when, I, when I'm going to the schools. I'm going to Phoenix a week from now, and uh, that's hopefully being advertised. And also, you're fluent in Spanish. You ministered in Spanish when you were in Chile, so I guess you would be available if people... I'm actually doing a bilingual church in Phoenix. I'll do an English service and then a Spanish one. That's good. So, yeah. So if any of you are looking... For somebody and thinking that, you know, uh, you need somebody to speak to the Spanish-speaking people, man, Barry is a very accomplished minister and bilingual. It's really good. Amen. A little out of practice, but I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Barry, we just love you, brother. We're so glad that, man, I, I tell you, I praise God that he brought you through this. Amen. There is no bad way to get healed. There is not. <laughs> And that would be the last, if I could say one more thing, sure. is that there are a lot of, I, one thing I learned, there are a lot of Christians out there that are dealing with similar situations, and they're feeling guilty, they're feeling condemnation and judgment from their churches, unfortunately, from friends and family. I thought you believed in healing and, you know, that kind of thing. And I would say just turn all of that off and follow your faith. You've got to know where your faith is in this situation. Yeah. Don't don't receive guilt and condemnation, and don't put guilt and condemnation on people because this is tough enough without that. There's a lot of people that receive guilt and condemnation from me because I'm stronger than horseradish on healing, <laughs> and I I tell people to put their their medicine down the toilet and apologize to the toilet for putting something that bad <laughs> in it. So because of statements like that, people just think that they're sinning if they go to a doctor. But I had a guy come up to me today, and I was giving a testimony about my son and how we stood and saw him healed. And he said, I've got a son. Do, do I go to the doctor? And I said, look, it just depends on where you are. Pray and let God show you. And so I come across real strong on it, but I do agree that you need to let God lead Absolutely. you because there's some people that just aren't to the place or I don't know what the reasons are, but anyway, you aren't going to get healed without taking advantage of some of the things that we've got, and you need to be at peace with that. I, I am happy I did what I did because I'm still here to learn more from God and be a blessing to more people. And if I had chosen to be stubborn and not go to the hospital, I wouldn't be here. We'd have had great memories of you. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we had put a plaque in the but, school and uh, stuff, but that's that. not I'd as rather, good as I'd rather be here. That's right. <laughs> Amen. So, man, we love you. Thank you for being a part of this. And I hope that this has encouraged you. And please go check that out. At the end of this, they'll be giving those uh, stats again or the information about how you can get Barry's materials. But 
I tell you, he's a person that's been right to the brink and back, and he has some things to share with you that could really help you. You got a teaching that we put out in the school on healing, right? I, had, a, I teach a course on healing. Course. I do lots of healing schools, so I, there's a lot of material for me on healing. So there is a lot of material, and we encourage you to please take advantage of it. Thank you for joining us for this month's Inside Story, and we'll see you again next month. On this Inside Story, Andrew interviewed Barry Bennett about his healing journey in 2020. The doctors told him to get his affairs in order and pronounced a death sentence over him. He is back to teaching at Karis Bible College. Barry is the author of four books with the following titles. Did God do this to me? He healed them all. Hearing God. Shaping your future. You can find Barry's books online at awmi.net or on Amazon. Join us in April for the wonderful, redemptive story of Michael and Kelly Moore, who God supernaturally brought together. God has blessed this blended family with a beautiful marriage and a God-given destiny. Michael and Kelly's passion and gifting for media ministry is being advanced through their work with Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. See you next time.